Okay, so the midterms were last night, and um, Matt Gates actually went on the Young Turks um, broadcast, and we just have a little bit that we're going to watch here. So, um, he it, wasn't on there, but for only like, I think, a seven or 18, 17 or 18 minutes. Mentioned it first. Um, obviously, wages is a very large issue. We're not going to so watch all of it. Do you think that we should raise the minimum wage so that the American people's salaries can keep up with the raising the rising costs of of all the goods uh, that they're having to deal with so the time when we saw rising wages was really during the trump presidency i don't believe that government mandated minimum wages are actually the way to increase real wages actually a lot of economists say that raising the minimum wage can be inflationary Our i guess but then it's like um no no strategy to tackle inflation will focus on cutting government spending not having a, a regime that pays people not to work i think a regime that pays people not to work i'm curious about that able -bodied a lot actually adults should be subject to work requirements previously when republican states have tried to do that democrat administrations haven't allowed them to haven't issued appropriate waivers and so if we can legislate work requirements into government funding bills i think that'll be a, a good counter pressure on inflation um okay so uh i don't so he just said that uh we have a regime a regime that pays able-bodied people not to work so i'm really curious hopefully they press him on that all right so raising wages not what you're planning to do to counter inflation got it anna no we it's wages. I just don't think the way to raise wages is a government mandated minimum wage increase. Then what is it? Work requirements? How does that make wages go up? That wasn't even an answer to the question. We 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 make it so there's work requirements for people that are able to work. How what is that? How does that make wages go up? Matt, explain. So how would wages increase uh, out of the kindness of corporations' hearts? Uh, <laughs> That's what I'm on. Like, what the fuck? He didn't even answer the question. How is how is that going to make wages go up, Matt? Okay, let's just... Who have a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders and keep Get him, doing corporate stock buybacks and... Oh, uh, my... Dividend let's go, Anna. ...for their shareholders no fan of big corporations. I think the biggest threat to our liberty is big government. The second biggest threat to big, big corporations and probably the third would be homeowners associations. But I do think that during the Trump era, we saw wages rise as a consequence of capital investment and the onshoring of cash that was largely pushed offshore to preserve intellectual property assets and revenue streams. And if we allowed more of that capital to come back into our country again, this is crazy. He is saying some pretty wild stuff for uh, Republican Matt Gates. I think we would do a lot to see. We're pretty the wild. In the workforce. Look, if you go around any district, Republican or Democrat, right now, the number one issue for a lot of small businesses is just how to get people to show up to work. And when you have a government that and Matt, Matt. The issue is not that people don't want to work. It's that people are not going to show up to work for shit fucking pay. They need higher wages to combat the raising the rising prices in this country. He is so out of touch with that response that he just said. It has nothing to do with he. I, I don't even know. Pays able-bodied people not to work. It really cuts against the ambitions and interests and dreams of a lot of the small businesses that are the backbone of our country okay i mean like i guess like during covid he could make that argument but it, it, that's when stuff was shut down we're not in the shutdowns anymore so i want to know who's getting all this money who's who's getting this money because i know a lot of people that are able to work and they're working and then i don't know people that are fucking just getting paid from the government to not work i really don't Okay, can you can you please be specific about what you're referring to when you say a government that pays people not to work? Fucking and, ghetto, and be specific Anna. in regard to numbers. Uh, how, yes. how much money are Americans allegedly getting paid by the government to sit home and not work? Yeah, where was that at? Well, during the pandemic era, people got no checks and when they were shut down. He's talking about two fucking years ago. Over two years ago. He's literally talking about two fucking years ago. When companies were shut down, yes. Right that was inflationary and i also think that when you provide government benefits 
He said that was inflationary. Body childless adults like Medicaid, like childcare, like transportation, like cell phones. Uh, then you you create in the economy a bubble, and when that bubble bursts, Medicare, working class cell people, phones, folks that liberals actually used to stand up for, <laughs> those folks get crushed and hammered when they go to the grocery store, when they go to the gas station. I also think Republicans are going to have a pretty big energy bill. Now, I'm not a drill everywhere, drill anywhere kind of guy. I think we've got to be smart and strategic. But so yes, he is. What the fuck is he talking about? That's the entire fucking the entirety of the Republican Party and most of the Democrats are pro fracking. Well, I, that's just a lie. We want to see the Keystone Pipeline reopen. No. We want to see more of the fracking and shale development in the interior of the country. And I think that... Just a side note, I was really surprised when Biden revoked those permits. I did not think he was going to take the Keystone XL Pipeline permits and pull them like that. I was surprised. Reducing energy prices Maybe it was just me. ...to lower inflation because you see those energy prices baked in at every layer of the supply chain. Well, I think that's a... Uh... It's a common myth that's uh, repeated over and over again by both the press and the Republican Party. We are the top oil and gas producer in the world. Yes, and we have been. We have been for a couple years now. She's 100% right about this. We're also the top exporter of oil yes, and gas. Yes, 100%. Because uh, our natural resources are completely owned by private corporations who get to sell those natural resources to the highest bidder. One million so percent. So genuinely concerned about keeping gas prices low at the pump. Here it we is. We could nationalize our oil and gas. Would you be willing to do that? No, I don't. Damn. Oh, my God. Anna's coming at him hard. Jesus. You know that the Venezuela energy model is one that the American people are voting for. Okay, so you want to allow corporations to export uh, oil and gas to the highest bidders internationally. Which is what happens, and that's why gas prices are so high. We, under Biden's administration, and you can go and look this up because it's very easy to find this, Biden has issued more fracking and drilling permits than any other administration there's close to i think 10 a little under 10,000 my number might be wrong but there is a lot a lot of permits for these companies to go out and start drilling the problem and re one of the biggest reasons why gas prices are so high right now is that these companies it's not that they're not drilling it, it is that they're not drilling they are purposely choosing not to drill the reason that they're choosing not to drill is because they literally create the supply and demand so if they create a short supply and the demand goes up they can hike the price up and is 100 right here and um it's like i said under biden and i think that this is uh, 100 a big criticism i have of biden he has issued more permits than all previous administrations have for drilling it's close to 10,000. It's the most, the most permits that we have ever had in this country for companies to go and drill for oil, and they're just not doing it. And the reason they're not doing it is because they know that they can hike the price up by creating this um, quasi shortage by not drilling. In their, in, <laughs> I mean, if you're a, if you're a fucking, um, if you own like a, a, a gas corporation or something, you're doing really well right now. You know, they're doing great. Now, I think we should repeal the Jones Act because you're right, there is production that's up, but as a consequence of the Jones Act, we're not able to actually get that energy to the places that we need it so that there's broad distribution and lower prices. So actually, there's a deregulation answer that I think would unlock lower prices for the American people given what we currently produce. No, no. Um, I wanted to just quickly, Jenk, one follow-up, and then I'll, I'll take over. And this is the last part the we're going to watch. point that you made about social services like Medicaid, which provides health care to literally the most impoverished people in the country. How Republicans just completely want to do away with Medicaid. Exactly. do you claim that that leads to inflation? I mean, I can explain I how hear the this. Federal Reserve engaging in quantitative easing, literally printing money and giving it to banks and corporations, who then turned around and invested in their own stocks and did dividends and all that. That definitely led to asset bubbles, private equity firms buying up entire neighborhoods of single family homes based on the money that was given to them by the Federal Reserve. And this has been happening. This has been happening for uh, what she's talking about. These um, these um, these big businesses that come in and literally just literally they buy entire neighborhoods. This has been happening for a couple years now. Um, 
But she's that Anna's always on point with this market. shit. I want you to explain exactly how Medicaid leads to inflation. I want to hear this too. Well, I agree with you regarding those corporate excesses. I am one of the people on Thomas Massey's bill to audit the Fed for the very reasons you laid out. I think the Fed has become a distribution system for corporate welfare, and then that cuts against working class Americans. But when you have people who aren't working, it's really funny that Matt Gates, of all people, is talking about working class Americans like he's ever fucking worked a day in his fucking life. Who are still able to get child care, health care, not as a consequence of being poor or sick or infirm or elderly, but just because of the Medicaid expansion that was ushered in through Obamacare, I think that is inflationary because then people don't have to go out and spend cash and have a real economic exchange for the services that they're receiving, often as a result of government largesse. What? What? So what I've heard so far is that giving people child care, health care, and higher wages is leading to inflation. And you guys are going to try to tackle inflation so that what I'm hearing from you is lower wages, less child care, less health care. That sounds perfectly Republican. That's pretty much... <laughs> Shank got him. I mean, that's pretty much what he said. That's... So that what I'm hearing from you is lower wages, less child care, less health care. That sounds perfectly Republican. Cenk, it's not just the government that can do these things. They're okay, we're not, <laughs> we're not going to watch anymore. But that was, I love how Shank ended it. But um, that was that was all we're going to watch for, for uh, today. Um, but um, I really, really enjoyed that. And, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, if you want to check them out, Go check out the Young Turks. They're really, really awesome. They're really, really amazing. Um, if you're watching this video, you probably already heard about them. But if you haven't checked them out, go check them out. Go watch um, the whole Matt Gates on election night. They also had a bunch of other really, really good guests, and their coverage was really, really good. I enjoyed watching a lot of it last night. And uh, peace out.